Hey, hello, everybody. I uh, hope you're having a great day today. Pastor David G. Grogan, Senior, Senior Pastor at Sojourner Life Ministries, and I'm the voice of Phoenix and Javelin. Today, um, I have uh, something I want to share with y'all. It's kind of heavy. Uh, I, I, I'm really glad I heard about it because um, that way I could I could find it, bring it up, and I can share it with y'all. Uh, some of y'all are probably going to be, you know, angry about this uh, this uh, report or this um this uh, story, but that's all right. That's all right. So, so let, let let me get started right here. So, as far as most people are concerned that know me, even though I'm a black man, you know, uh, they would I would be considered an Uncle Tom because I listen to Rush Limbaugh. I would be considered an Uncle Tom uh, because I'm I'm conservative in my in my beliefs. They would consider me be an Uncle Tom because uh, as a black man, I'm supposed to vote as a Democratic. And if you don't vote as a Democratic, then you got to be an Uncle Tom, okay? So, or uh, Oreo, whatever you want to call. If you if you call me an Oreo, just make sure you get a, <laughs> make sure you give me, have a glass of milk there because I love Oreos and milk. Uh, but with, all, with that said, listen to me, we're in a time where uh, black people are defined, we're supposed to be defined by, uh, you know, how we vote. We're defined, okay, now keep that in mind now. Okay, so we're, we're that's how we're defined. We're defined by how we vote, uh, what people say, how we should vote, uh, who we hang around with. You know, back in the day, if you were black and you had more uh, white friends and you had uh, black friends and you were considered an Uncle Tom, and uh, and and you know you could be you could be talked about and, and degraded because of the fact that you hang around with you don't hang around with your own kind. You know, you know you spend you don't spend a lot of time with your own kind. And so now we're in a time where if you vote outside the, once again, outside the, uh, the uh, place where, where black people think you should vote, then you're Uncle Tom. And then if this, this story is really good because what it's going to do, it's going to show us as black people where, how we are being led around, um, especially in the liberal party. And I, I, you know, I have to go there. I, I have to go there. I know you don't like it, you know, you know, because, and that's once again, that's why, uh, well, that's why you would consider me Uncle Tom because I'm conservative. Okay. But I'm like this, you know, you can call me whatever you want to call me, but I'm just not going to act and do what people tell me that I should be doing in order to be at peace with somebody just because of the color of my skin. I'm a lot deeper than that. You know, there's more about me than the color of my skin. I'm like I said, I'm a pastor, uh, uh, um, an ordained, you know, um, pastor, uh, husband, father, grandfather, you know, a friend to all that I can be. I don't care what the color of your skin is. Uh, but you know, we're living in a time where, and I can guarantee that there, there are there are black people that get on black people's nerves. You know, that old saying, that old saying, you know, you're guilt by association. You know, oftentimes, you know, you know, we all, people look at us and they figure us all to be alike because of who we hang around with or because of the color of our skin. So apparently to a lot of people, I'm not black enough. You know, I'm just not black enough. I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't um, talk black enough. Maybe I don't dress black enough. I mean, this whole thing, there's a lot of things that, that our youth are picking up. Uh, of the, the prison clothes, prison clothes, and that's C L O T H E S clothes garb, uh, E S. Uh, they're what they wear, their apparel. A lot of those things were are are, are brought um, back out onto. Were brought back on the street because of prison, and now because that is the thing to be, you know, the bad boy image, you know, to have some um, prison cred, uh, rapper credibility. So if you don't have those things and you determine that you want to live your life and you want to walk differently from that and you don't talk the way black people are supposed to talk, then you are considered Uncle Tom. Thomas Sewell, uh, I'm sure, was considered Uncle Tom. Um, ben um, Carson, considered to be an Uncle Tom. Clarence Thomas, considered to be Uncle Tom. And I know because you can read reports from back, you know, and, and all the hard times they had to deal with dealing with people that felt like because they they dealt with things the way that they did, that they were Uncle Toms, you know, because they talked about 
the black experience. And these men have all the right in the world to talk about the black experience, just like I have all the right in the world to talk about the black experience. But just because I talk about the black experience doesn't mean that I have to um, conduct myself the way society says that I'm supposed to conduct myself as a black man. Okay. Now this, that's why, that's why this, that's why this, uh, this, uh, uh, this um, article is really, really good. I'm going to read it. It's not real long. Um, I didn't, I didn't know about this gentleman until I um, heard him um, spoken about on Rush Limbaugh. I was listening to him and I heard him talk about him. And then I went back and I, I began to read a whole bunch of articles and a whole bunch of stuff about this particular gentleman and found out who he was. But what caught my ear was what I was hearing uh, Rush Limbaugh say about this gentleman. And when you listen, if you'll listen with an ear to understand and just because, you know, once again, there's so many people that they, they just don't, they're, they're, they enjoy being ignorant. They would rather be ignorant. Um, I, I had I had a gentleman tell me one time that black people can't be racist because in order for you to be a racist, you have to have power over the person or over the group of people that you're racist over. So in order for uh, white people can be racist because they, according to his explanation, White people can be racist because they they wield power and authority over black people. Uh, black people can't be racist because they don't have no power. I mean, this is what he said, and, it, it, and when you listen to it, this is um, this is it, it's it, it flies in the face of anything that makes any kind of sense. You could be a racist. I don't care how rich or how poor you are, what power you have, what power you don't have. You could be a racist just by virtue of the hatred that you have in your heart for another group of people, for for because of the color of their skin. That's what a racist is. So, you know, when you begin to, we begin to understand that, I, I think one of the things before I read this article, y'all, is we're just not being honest with ourselves. Black people, we're just not being honest with ourselves. We're not being true to ourselves as individuals. We're only being true to what we feel is how we're supposed to be true based on the color of our skin. That's the only reason... Those are the reasons that we are um, supposedly being true to ourselves. So I'm going to read this article. I'm going to try to read it in its whole without having comment. And then when I get done, you know, I'll come back and have comment. This is Jason Whitlock says, capitalizing B, the B letter, in black is control by libs. No one else has to live up to their skin color. And this particular article um, was is dated uh, November the 14th, twenty. 20 okay so um it goes on to say that a longtime sports writer jason uh whitlock exposed the latest attempts by liberals to get the black community to live up to our skin color okay um the outkick columnist spoke and that's 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 this, this particular um uh, the one that did this article the OutKick columnist spoke with Fox News, or this, excuse me, Jason Whitlock is the OutKick columnist. He spoke with Fox News host Tucker Carlson about the Associated Press decision to change its writing style guide to capitalize the lowercase b in black uh, to an uppercase b when using the term in a racial, ethnic, or cultural sense. Whitlock agreed with Carlson that the Change does not denote a sense of respect, but is just another shot by the left at getting control. Citing the Associated Press change, which came amid months of racial tensions in the United States and ongoing protests, Carlson noted on, on Tucker Carlson, uh, quote, this week that the W in the term white was not given the same makeover because as, um, because as the outlet explain, quote, white people generally do not share the same history and culture. Uh, so, a quote, so what does this mean? Is there a deeper meaning that we can take from it? And what effect does it have on society? Language changes the way we think. It's the means of which we communicate, but also the means by which we understand the world languages. OK, so when the words change, or uh, so do our ideas and understanding. That's what he said. That's what War Warlock said. Whitlock said. So Whitlock weighed in saying the the uh, saying the move was a much 
bigger deal. It is a way of defining to black people that your most prized possession, your greatest asset, your most defining characteristic is your skin color. And once uh, you convince people that their skin color is their most important asset, defining characteristic, then they start to cater all their behavior to show off that attribute. This is what Whitlock said, and I agree with him. Okay? Okay, let me, let me go on so I don't keep on, so I don't say too much. Uh, no one else has to live up to their skin color. They are free to a a accentuate their intelligence, their faith in God, their commitment to family, their love of freedom, Whitlock said, Whitlock added. But we as black people, and this is a quote, we as black people, as defined by the white liberals, in my view, and this is his personal view, you don't have to agree with them, you know, you, 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 you don't have to agree with them. But this is his view, and he has the right to get his view out. If you have a view, then you need to write in, and you write something, and write a, uh, and, and get, uh, uh, get interviewed by somebody that has some, some, some power to get you on, where you can put your view out there. But this is his view, okay? Uh, running, running, the main, running the mainstream media, running Hollywood, we have to live up to our skin color above all else. And that's just not much of an attribute in terms of it's a great packaging. I'm very proud of being black, but that's not my number one attribute, and he explained. And I agree 100%. What did uh, um, Martin Luther King said it best? And everybody wants to quote Martin Luther King because of what he said, but nobody wants to listen to something like this. That's the truth. That we wanted to, he wanted the day, he was looking for the day to come when we would be judged by the content of by, by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. That's what Martin Luther King said. It's all about the content. It's not about the package. It shouldn't be about the package. It should be about the content. Okay? So um, I want to be defined by my faith in God. This is what, what, what Whitlock is saying. I want to be defined by my intelligence. That's what I want people to see when they think about me. Not my skin color, Whitlock said. Whitlock told Fox News host uh, Tucker Carlson. Carlson noted that this view was decidedly different from many who would see the AP um, change as uh, an elaborate show of respect rather than, in Whitlock's perception, as a means of control. The sports columnist agreed, noting how 400 years ago when, uh, when America introduced slavery, the black people's skin color would tell you all you need to know about them, as they were generally defined as a special classification of people who lacked the freedom and wealth enjoyed by others because of the color of their skin. These people 400 years later, now these people 400 years later, these are the, uh, are the, are the ideological descendants of those bigots from 400 years ago. Doubling down a written uh, reminder to, uh, doubling down a written reminder to black people, your skin color is your defining characteristic. And therefore, we are going to limit your freedom. You spend all of your ener energy trying to be unapologetically black. Uh, every, everybody else gets to go out and try to be intelligent, responsible, God-fearing, patriotic, would luck explain. Nothing how others, uh, excuse me, noting how others groups do not want to be defined by skin color, but prefer to focus on intelligence and ability to achieve in this country. So black people, unlike everybody else, you go out and prove to everybody how black you are. Become unapologetically black, and we are going to uh, celebrate it. He continued noting how they cannot even control what is black, as every as every liberal running Hollywood does it for them. Um, adding in a shot, adding a shot at former Vice President uh, Joe Biden. It goes on to say, we are not even in control of that. So we are actually trying to meet standards defined defined for us by other people live up to their standards. And they are defining blackness as a lot of things that just aren't healthy for us, Whitlock told Carlson. He called out black celebrities like stand-up comedian and actor Dave Chappelle, who are allowing themselves to be manipulated as the people in control of Hollywood grant you that stage and tell you to go be black by saying the N-word. 
generalize about white people, be racist, be angry, be all of those things. Great article. Great article. Because listen to me, y'all. My black people, call me what you want. But uh, Jason Whitlock is absolutely right. Just because I'm black, it doesn't mean that I have to, uh, in order to show how black I am, that I have to get out there and, you know, define myself based on rap music, you know, uh, talking um, ugly about my own black women. I don't have to define myself to anybody based on the color of my skin of who I am. I want to live a life. I want to live a life of, of luxury like anybody else wants to live my life, uh, live a life of luxury. But you know what? It, what is so bad is that he is so right what he says. We, we have become, black people, have we have become our own worst enemy. We're angry at everybody. We're angry with ourselves. Self, we, we have that self-loathing that self-hatred to where we don't have no problem with destroying each other. We don't have no problem with looking down our nose at each other. When you got into society, the only thing that covers the, the, the disdain that black people have for each other is the mask now that we have to wear because of COVID. We don't smile at each other anymore because we're always angry. I mean, you know, hey, the white man has defined us as being uh, broke down, uh, the liberals, now liberals, because this is how they keep their control. And this is what Jason Whitlock was saying. This is how liberals keep their control. They tell you that you are, uh, woe is you. They tell you that you don't have the ability to really succeed because there's too many things that are against you. They tell you that, you know, nobody really cares about you, but there's only a few of them that want to fix your life for you and make it so you can enjoy your life in your black skin. So your black skin, as far as they're concerned, has become your most valuable asset for you. Your black skin has become the is become your ticket to uh, anything that you want to get from society because you're black. You can do it. Oh, it's it, the black people are going out breaking stuff up and tearing stuff and robbing and stealing and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, I'm not painting with a broad brush because there's a lot of really sharp black people out there, males and females, some that will, will agree with me wholehearted and some that would disagree with me wholehearted. But that's all right. You, we, that's a freedom that we have. But when our black skin becomes the, uh, the, 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 the ticket for us to go out and tear people's stuff up and steal from people to say, well, this is our, our, our reparations. We, we, we deserve this because we're black. So the only thing that the only thing that gets us there, the only thing that allows us to do these things is because we're black. The 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 the, the whites that are maybe going along with it, the Hispanics that are probably going along with it, they're just going along, along with it because they can get something out of it. They're not going along with it because they're talking about their their brown skin or 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 their their whites are being called you know uh, 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 nigger lovers and stuff like that. No, that's not why they're going along. They're going along because they can just get something while you're in the process of using the color of your skin. To get stuff that doesn't belong to you. And I'm going to tell you something. He's, he's absolutely right. I'm not going to. That's why, you know, as far as liberals are concerned, they can do whatever they want to do. But I'm, I'm a Christian first. I'm a Christian man first. I'm a pastor. I, I respect everybody in their position. I respect everybody no matter what the color of their skin is. I respect everybody for the things that they like or dislike. That's totally up to you. But I'm not going to have anybody tell me that because I'm black that I have to use the color of my skin and that's my ticket. That's my meal ticket. The color of my skin is my meal ticket. And because liberals have defined and because they say how I'm supposed to conduct myself as a black person, what I can do, what I can't do, the power I have or I don't have, how I'm supposed to be in the movies, how I'm supposed to um, call you know um, my own people out of their name to show my blackness. I'm supposed to dress a certain way to show my blackness I'm supposed to eat certain things to show my blackness, you know, because that's just who I am. I don't know. That's that's I don't do that. And if you're doing it, you have been tricked, deceived, bamboozled to believe that it's only because of the color of your skin. That's that's your only attribute attribute. So, you know, so don't worry about making sure your kids go through school because they're black and that they're not expected to graduate from high school. They're not expected to go to college. 
They're not expected to go into the military and become pilots, you know, astronauts, all the things that, you know, that some of our black people have done because they're not going to hear that they're not, that, that, you know, they don't have the ability to do it. Uh, so just use your color of your skin as your greatest asset. Listen to me, I'm almost done. Great article. Jason Whitlock, he'll probably, he, I'm sure he'll catch heat about it. I'm sure y'all hear from y'all about it, but that's all right. I'll answer you if I want to. If I don't, I don't have to, I don't, I don't have to answer you. I'm like this. I'm a black man, 61 years old, and I am proud to be black. I am glad I'm black. I was born black. I live black. I'm born in Jackson, Mississippi. Been around black people, Hispanics, been around white people, been in the military, up and down, you know, all type of stuff. I know who I am. I don't need no liberal to tell me that in order for me to be seen as somebody that I have to use the color of my skin as my greatest asset. You're black. Be black. Act like black people act. Well, how is that? How are black people act? How are black people supposed to act? How am I supposed to act? Some, so, if, so if I don't act like a black person, like, like a liberal thinks, a white liberal thinks I'm supposed to act, then he can call me Uncle Tom and you'll agree with him because I don't act the way you act. Because I like to read. Because I, maybe I, I enjoy reading Thomas Sewell's books. Clarence, uh, 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 Clarence Thomas. I enjoy reading the things about the things that he went through. And all so many other black authors and, 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 and smart-minded black people going back into history. You realize that, that not everybody that was black was a slave. Some, you know, many, many of the black people, they, they, they escaped slavery and made things out of their lives became great people, great black people. But nowadays, in this century, listen to me, in 2020, you black people, you keep on listening to these liberals telling you how you're supposed to be because you're black. What did Joe Biden say? If you have a problem determining who you're going to vote between him and Donald Trump, then you ain't black. Well, look, I guess, I, look, I guess this, that's on me. Whatever it is, whatever the color of my skin, however it got there, I ain't black because I sure didn't vote for him. And I'm not that I'm being ugly about him, but that just shows the arrogance and the type of control that white liberality will have on black people. And you allow them to do that. And you forget who you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. Many, a lot of black people aren't saved. So they don't even have that ability. They don't have the strength. They don't have the, the, the ability to realize who they are in Christ Jesus because they're not saved. But for those of you that are saved, and you will let somebody tell you that how you're supposed to vote, how you're supposed to act as a black person because of the color of your skin. And you won't seek Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords for your direction and how you're supposed to conduct yourself. Well, then woe to you and shame on you. Because listen to me. Can nobody, black, white, yellow, brown, tell me how I'm supposed to act and especially tell me why I'm supposed to act a certain way because of the color of my skin. That's foolishness. And that's arrogance on their part. That's trying to get control over me to make me look at myself and go, that's right, that's all I'm good for. Because I'm a black man, that's all I'm good for. Because I'm a black man, I'm not expected to be educated because I'm a black man, I'm not expected to love the Lord. Because I'm a black man, I'm not expected to make sure my house is clean and my yard is clean because I'm a black man. I'm not expected to go out there and work hard and 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 get wealth because I'm a black man. I'm not. Just, no, oh no, that's that's you know. They tell me that you know uh, because I'm a black man, I need to I, I I need to keep that slave man um, sharecropper mentality. That's what they want you to do. That's what they want me to do. But I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it, y'all. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be walking around whining and mean. We are so nasty. I'm gonna say this. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be done. We are so nasty towards each other. It's amazing. And you cannot tell me that you don't see it. I can get along with anybody. I don't care if you are conservative, if you're liberal, black, white, brown. I don't care if you're rich or poor. I don't care if you stink or you smell like lilacs. I can get along with everybody. If they, would, if they want to get, away, get along with me. If they don't get along, want to get along with me, then I just leave them to themselves. I don't talk about them. I don't curse them. I don't spit at them. I don't mock them. I don't call them names. I just leave them to themselves and let them do what they want to do. But society has got black people so mean, so on edge, so unsure of who they are anymore. 
that they're always waiting for somebody to tell them what they need to do. They're waiting for somebody to tell them how they need to vote. They're waiting for somebody, waiting for somebody to tell them how, we're, how they're supposed to act in the entertainment world, in business. Waiting for somebody to tell them that you, you know, and then and then the first time that somebody tells them, well, well, you know, you can't do this and you can't do that. The first thing you think instead of going, that's a life in the pit of hell. Yes, I can. You tell, oh, yeah, I guess I can. Because I'm a black man. And woe is me. White man had his foot on my neck for the last 400 years. And apparently for a lot of y'all, he still does. His, he, he ain't got his foot on my neck. White man ain't got, white man doesn't. Other black men don't that want to call me Uncle Tom and call me out of my name. No, nobody has their foot on my neck because I'm not going to allow it to take place because I know that who the son sets free is free indeed. I'm free in Jesus Christ. I'm not bound by the things that of the past. I'm not bound by the that by the racist rhetoric, rhetoric that the liberal party is telling me to keep me in a, and keep me in my place. Listen to me, y'all. You better think about what you're doing, and you better listen to what I'm saying, and you better start checking yourself out. And you better, if you want to walk, walk with your head up. You, you young black men, pull your pants up. You don't have to, you don't listen, you don't, I don't care what, what, I don't care about the bad boy image. I don't care. Stop calling you, stop calling your sisters and your, in the black, uh, black, uh, uh, women in, in your community out of their names. Call them what their name is. Tell them what, what is their name? Find out what their name is and treat them like, and treat them like, treat them like the queens. That you know, treat them like the queens that you say that they are. You black queens, you black kings. Y'all don't even act like that because you've been told for so long that that's not the way black people are supposed to act. Black people are supposed to act the way you're acting right now, dressing, singing, cursing, supposed to act like a nigga. Black, your, our own sons and daughters calling themselves nigga, nigga, nigga on, that, on national TV, on, on, on TV, in, in the music, you know, in the neighborhoods. And it just goes on and goes on and goes on. And we wonder how come things ain't gotten any better. Things haven't gotten any better because you've been allowed yourself to be lied to to think that's all you're worth. And as long as you, as long as you continue to think like that, you're going to continue to act like that. And as long as you continue to act like that, you're going to continue uh, 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 setting and this, 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 uh, this uh, uh, image to everybody else that that's all you, who you really are. You know, look, can't be nice to each other anymore. Can't be nice to each other because we're so angry. We're so mean. We're so untoward. Oh my goodness, we're so untoward. But I thank God once again for Jesus Christ. So listen to me. If you are not saved and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's very easy. The word of God says, if you if you, uh, con if you pr uh, profess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, and that he rose on the third day with all power. If you believe that in your heart, the word of God says you shall be saved. Confess that you're a sinner. Admit that you're a sinner. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. He says in 1 John 1 and 9, if you confess your sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And then when you become saved, the Holy Spirit comes to make his abode in you. You listen to me. You uh, ask the Lord to, uh, uh, Lord to bless you, to send you to a place where you can learn what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. So you can grow in stature. No matter, it doesn't matter if the color of your skin, that you can grow in stature as a man or as a woman, you know, from the inside out. Coming to know who you're supposed to be, not according to the color of your skin, what somebody tells you you're supposed to be, but what God says that you have been created to be. And once you do that, I guarantee you this, you won't have no problem. You might have, you know, people call your names, but you won't pay them no attention because you'll know who you really are. With that said, y'all, it's uh, been a pleasure, you know. Uh, enjoy yourself. Enjoy your days. Don't listen to what anybody tells you about how you're supposed to act because of the color of your skin. You can be led by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the only way that can happen is you get saved. Until next time we come back together again, God bless you and farewell.